So there's 129. And, like I said, I'm going to give you guys a little uh, tour of my uh, work area. wouldn't really call it a shop because, uh, well, I'm outside. Oh, that mask makes me look old as hell. That's weird. So, uh, this is... My furnace. That's where I do all my melting, propane, and the scrap pile is still considerable. I actually found a bunch more the other day, which is right there. And the shed, yeah, still a lot. So, this is where the magic happens, and uh, I got my molds, that's one of my big ones, one of my one pounders, and uh, my one kilos, and this is actually one of my personal favorites because it's a uh, a mini bar. Mini bar. It's a small uh, bar ink, uh, ingot mold. And uh, oh, look at this scrap I found yesterday. Yeah, this over here is slag. It's uh, what gets scooped out of uh, the crucible. Uh, it does still contain some brass, so I can try to salvage that and melt again and and get more of the brass out. But I've got my uh, buckets here. This is my brass bucket. Obviously, it's nowhere near all my brass, but I'm starting to separate it. It's actually pretty heavy already. Uh, there's my dirty copper bucket and my clean copper bucket. So that uh, machine right here doesn't work. It burned out. And I'm going to show you what I got instead. Uh, but here's my shelf with my all my sanding stuff, my crucibles. I found out that it's better to use a different crucible for each kind of metal. Uh, look at the bottom of that one. Yeah. But uh, so this is my brass one. Uh, this is my aluminum zinc one, and my copper one is still in the crucible. And this whole box is also sanding things. These are graphite rods for stirring, my sander. But, uh, oh, in here I got zinc that I should have covered when I was sanding the brass, but I didn't. So it's got brass dust all over it I'll have to clean off. More aluminum. I don't come into to a lot of it. And this is the workbench with my chop saw. It's kind of a mess right now because I was working out here. Uh, and a variety of tools. But this was my little game changer. This guy right here. It's a much more powerful buffer than the one you saw laying on the floor. And allows me to work much, much faster. So, let me show you what I've been doing today. Uh, these are, this is my tiny, my little brass uh, ingot. High polished, I call them high relief. They're not exactly mirror polished, but as you can see, very, very shiny. And uh, a friend of mine who does uh, psychology even said, uh, it's better to make them shiny, like a high relief, because humans, as a species, tend to like our items shiny. And uh, here's a high relief copper I just did, which is a far cry from the other one I showed you guys. This is how they start out. So as you can see, put them next to each other. Yeah, that's 
much better and those are going to be a higher price. Here's a high relief brass. This one actually, uh, another hole came up while I was sanding it. I don't know if you can see that. Do you see how mirrored it is? Even though it's not a mirror finish. But you see that hole right there? Uh, that kind of ticked me off. Um, I can go back and get that done down. I need to get a belt sander because you can see it's a little uneven on top. So I want to get the uh, the belt sander thing again, so that I can set it on it and let it smooth out all the sides. But look at this guy, I just did one side of a high relief 5 pound, this is copper, and it's called a Kit Kat ingot. And the reason it's called a Kit Kat ingot is because it's shaped like a Kit Kat. But when this whole ingot's done, that's what it's going to look like. Now, at the scrapyard, I'll use the, the five pound for this example. At the scrapyard, if I took this in in its original form, which is just old copper pipe, they would give about $2.10 a pound. So this weighs about five pounds. So I would get like $11 at the most, or $10.50, right? Once I have this, now in this shape, un, you know, just brushed, clean I've been selling them online from 40 to 50 dollars when I have the whole thing high relief like this and I'm gonna get a, a nice stamp to put in it I don't know which side I'm gonna stamp that side or that side but when I get a nice stamp to put on it as well um, these are gonna be eighty dollars twice the price uh, and if somebody offers me a decent price over the 40 then I'll do that and uh, these ingots the high relief ones, I'm going to be at like 15, 16 for these. Uh, now here's the little funny part about uh, products. This is about a one pound brass high relief that I'm going to charge about $10 for. But this only weighs about an ounce. So 16 of these to make a one pound and I'm going to be charging $3 for these. So 16 of these times $3 is like $60 for the same one pound. But, uh, and I do have uh, small copper ones too. This one's unfinished, of course. Uh, but that's what I've been uh, doing, and it's actually going really well. Uh, I made another sale today, and I will probably be making another sale later today because a couple people clicked the, uh, they became, you know, watchers on my stuff. I just think they're, they're so nice done like this, and this new machine just, it, it makes it, so much easier I can do it so much faster uh, so I can't wait to see uh, where we go in the coming days months uh, we got about 12 to 14 months left to make it happen and I think now it's it's more doable than ever it's more reachable than ever so uh, Dietrich thank you so much I don't think I'd have gotten here without at a bare minimum your uh, comments and everything and uh, Marcel you as well and I will talk to you guys tomorrow